Hi, now in this video, we are going to talk about global variables in Solity. Global variables in Solity makes the life of a Solity developer very easy. So Solity provides us with some variables like these, which are very helpful for writing Solity code. So for example, block hash, which returns the latest block number. So here you can see that hash of the given block when block number is one of the 256 most recent blocks, otherwise written zero. Okay. Then we have this block.base fees, block.chain ID, and we have so many different global variables. Some of these global variables are very useful like block.timestamp, message.sender, and message.value. And we will talk about these global variables, okay, in this video. And definitely, if you want to check out all these different variables, you can try it by your own. But let me show you how we can use these three different global variables. So let me first of all show you how to use this message.sender. So let me create one function, for example, okay, and let me have this call by address, okay, or let me not have this name, otherwise it will confuse so many different people. So let me have, uh, for example, caller address, okay. So this function is going to return the address of the person who is going to call it. So let me do that, public view returns, and this will be address because this is going to return some address. So we want to have the address of the caller means whosoever is going to call this function. I want the address of that particular person. So in order to access that address, what I have to do is I have to write return message dot sender. Now this message dot sender will return us with the person or I will say this message dot sender will return the address of the person who is actually calling this function and we can check that. So for now, let us let me uh, let me give an example, for example. Let me give you an example in order to better understand it. So in this, if you will see currently we have this account list, right? And I have selected this particular address and I'm going to use this address in order to call this function. So I'm going to, okay, let me delete these previous contracts. Now deploy it. So now I'm going to call this function. So if I will call this function, you can clearly see that since I have selected this address in order to call this function, that's why this return this particular address. Okay. So if I will change this address, let's say to some other address, AB8, and now I'm calling this function. So you can clearly see that message.sender is actually holding the address of the person who is actually calling, right? Which is actually zero AB8 because this is the person who has called this caller address function. In the same way, let's say if I have selected this particular address and if I have called this now, so you can clearly see that now it is returning us the address of this particular person. So message.sender is actually returning the address of the person who is actually calling this particular function. And this is a very useful, this is a very useful global variable, which you are going to use a lot in your smart contract. But for now, I hope you have understood the concept behind message.sender. You can read this in this as well. So message.sender, sender of the message. So when it's saying sender of the message, it's actually the caller of the function, okay, in a much more easy way. Now let me show you another uh, thing, another global variable, and that global variable is block dot timestamp, which actually returns the current block timestamp. So return block timestamp. So let me again have public here, view returns, and this will be in uint, and then it will return block dot timestamp. Now, why I have this UINT? Because block.timestamp will be a UINT type data. So that's why UINT. Okay. Let me deploy this. And let me call this written block timestamp. So you can see that it has returned us with this timestamp, right? And this timestamp is nothing but this is Unix timestamp. So Unix clock is running since 1st January 1970. Okay. That is a one second clock, which is ticking every second. And that's why we have this weird kind of timestamp. And we can convert this if we want to. We can go and copy this timestamp. We can go to this unix timestamp.com and we can enter our timestamp. So currently, if you will see, this is the timestamp, which is actually ticking for every one second. And this clock is running since January 1, 1970. And if I will convert my timestamp, which is which I have copied right now, I will convert it. So when I'm converting it, you can clearly see that. So this is my time zone. I am living in India. So I will show you this Tuesday, January 3, 2023. Okay. And this is the time at which we have actually, you know, deployed the, at, at which we have actually 
you know created this block so this is the timestamp of this particular block like when this transaction is successful and the block is created okay and that's what we are seeing here as well so this is the time in our time zone right and we will talk about the third global variable that is message dot value in the next video when we will talk about payable addresses and payable function because then only you are going to understand the concept of this message dot value in a much more better way okay so i hope you enjoyed this video meet you soon in the next video if you have liked this video please click on that like button if you are new to this channel please subscribe to this channel because i am regularly going to upload new blockchain courses on this channel so meet you soon in the next video till then take care bye bye and do not forget if you have any doubts please comment below okay